Next question. Okay. Um, my question is directed towards the Green Party. Um, you said that you can explain um, the carbon plan in two minutes. Can you explain it in one? I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, a carbon tax, okay, let, let's take a corporation. The goal of a corporation is to earn profits. So anything they do to reduce their profits, they're not, they're not doing their job, basically. So right now, if you produce a ton of greenhouse gases, you can emit it into the atmosphere and it will cost you nothing. If, if somebody dumps a ton of garbage in your backyard, you're not going to be happy about that. Yet we let polluters do that every day and it's affecting all of us. So we need to create an incentive. A business needs an incentive in order to invest. What we're saying is, $100 a ton, $50 a tax, and $50 incentive for every ton that they reduce. So with that $100, now there's real incentive. A company can reduce their greenhouse gas emissions from 1,000 tons to 500 tons, let's say by investing $100,000. Now there's, there's a formula there. There's a vehicle for them to make that investment to, to earn the money back or to reduce their tax burden. That's, that's the key thing to understand. Now, that the money that's earned from that revenue, that we can now put into income splitting. We can take the pressure off the, the, uh, the middle class so that they can, um, so that they can, see, I need another minute. <laughs> You'll get another second. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With this proposal, the only thing the middle class will be splitting is their heads. Because I say this puts uh, added pressure onto regular families. I say, and the NDP says, we need a cap and trade system which goes at polluters and have polluters pay for their pollution. It's time we have regulators, it's time we have more regulations, it's time we oversee polluters. Now, uh, the NDP is proposing innovative solutions um, in uh, the economy. Let's adopt a green collar economy. Let's put money into making more uh, vehicles and other uh, um, uh, uh, instruments and other uh, things in industry that are environmentally sensitive. Let's invest in that. And let's create an industry around that, around environmentally sensitive solutions. <clears throat> and secondly, we want to meet international targets. It's, uh, that's the goal of the cap and trade system the NDP is saying. We want to reduce carbon greenhouse emissions in Canada by 80% by 2050. And we can only do this by the, in the Kyoto Protocol, in the uh, having goals and reaching them. In the Kyoto Protocol, which no. this Conservative government no. has reneged on. No. Ms. Cadis? Uh, I think the essence of the uh, green shift is that we reduce taxes on areas such as income, investment, innovation, which are critical to our competitiveness and our economy, having a strong economy. And that we, uh, we have a, a price on carbon for pollution, for greenhouse gas emissions. It is a carbon constrained global environment right now. So again, if we do not uh, play our role and be part of this new reality, then we will be left behind. Five. Not only will we have uh, adverse ramifications for our health, for our economy, uh, for our capacity, and for our opportunities. Uh, going forward. So this is something that's very necessary so we can get at a neutral where we are present in a conservative government so we just do not get it. When I hear liberals talk about the environment, I'm reminded of the, um, the Beatles song, Across the Universe, words are flowing like endless rain into a paper cup. <laughs> the liberals can talk the hind leg off a dog, but they do nothing. For 13 years they were in power. They signed the Kyoto Agreement. Nothing happened. Kyoto was wishful thinking. Um, Mr. Dion was environment minister and achieved absolutely nothing. The carbon tax will be a tax against each and every one in this room and it will not reduce pollution. We have to tax the big polluters. We have to give them incentives. We have to regulate. Um, but we have to, we have to make sure that the innocents don't end up paying that tax. By the way, thank you for the question. There's lots of examples the world over of countries that have instituted carbon tax and they've been successful. Sweden is, is a, an example. They've reduced their greenhouse gases from 1990 levels by 9%. At the same time, they've increased their GDP by 44%. That's almost a 3% average. So it can be done. And Peter likes to say Sweden is a bad is a bad example, but there's other examples. Sweden is a cold country just like Canada is a cold country. There's no reason why we can't do this. And the, and the premise behind that is 
polluter pays. Until we put an incentive for, for businesses to invest in technology to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, it's not going to happen. You know, Rick Mercer's one-ton challenge there had literally zero effect. We need to come up with programs that will give industry and business a real incentive to invest in this. It, it, all of our futures are in, lying in the, in the balance. And thanks for the question.